Welcome back on the AM show. Time now for us to get into the big stories. And some parts of the Great Accra region, the central region, have faced water shortages. Where I am, water has flowed only once in over a week. But is there anything to this? Is there any, any explanation, so to speak? And from wherever you are, let us know what has been your water supply situation in your community. Well, joining us for a conversation on that, the Director of Communication with the Ghana Water Company Limited, I'm talking about Mr. Stanley Marty. I've, I've spoken to this man for God knows how long when it comes to water matters. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it's good to have you smiling and everything. I want to start on a bit of a different note. Um, did you watch the Black Stars match yesterday? Yes, I did. And uh, it was heartbreaking. Your reaction? Uh, and especially when um, you, we all felt that this one, as for this one, that we have sealed This it. one, dear. This one, dear. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it, it happened. But, well, um, we, maybe God knows best. Um, mm. The pundits say that there is still the slimmest of chances that we could qualify. There are three teams, Algeria among others, on two points. But... Yeah. They have a game in hand. Yes. So we must pray that when they play, they lose. <laughs> Why do we do this to ourselves? It, but it, uh, it, I feel it's, it's a cost-cutting it's, measure. It's, it's sad. It's sad. And I think, I think if we do real, uh, real analysis, mm. we'll realize where the problem with um, our football team, where the problems are. And, uh, we need to do you see it, any of those it's problems? Like, it's like we know, but we are unable to, to, to be sincere with ourselves. And to, and, to, and to do what they do. You've watched them. football for a long time. What do you see to be some of the problems? <laughs> um, I, I think we, we should have a genuine heart to save Mother Ghana. Okay. A genuine heart to do uh, uh, genuine things. For, you think that patriotism for, 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 is not really... I don't think do you know something I noticed yesterday that I was sharing? money. 90s, early 2000s, you would still have Black Stars playing. Listen, even if you were asleep, and the team scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, hear. yesterday yeah. when, when we were scoring, there's only one family in my community. I could hear because I know where they are. They were the only ones shouting. Just like mine. You know, there's one family. Uh, yeah. That's it. No one was, was bothered. It's, it's, it's sad. It's sad. It's sad. But um, uh, let's see. We'll keep praying for, for them and mm. hope that um, at least we'll all have that um, God fearing attitude um, towards serving our mother, our mother Ghana. Mm. And I think we can get the best out of it. Yeah. Let's talk water. Um, some people are asking, yes, you know why. Hey. Before, before we go on, you mm. know, I, I watched uh, social, these social media short videos. And um, the a former coach, assistant coach, also was talking about um, the team. Which one are you referring to? Um, I've forgotten the name, but the former coach, old one. Uh, oh, no, no, Chris Yapia. No, I think uh, uh, an old uh, coach. And uh, okay. he was talking about the fact that a coach goes to the stadium and, and there will be a team list from elsewhere, not from the training grounds. A mm. team list from somewhere for you to oh, feature. Yeah. And, feature and you're if that thing is still happening, then there's no way we'll move forward. You know, let's get the right people to play. So if you're just thinking about what we are going to get because we, we hold power, and so we just put in our players, whether they are good or not, then how can we move forward? So we may have to pay attention to some of these uh, things. Let's talk about, let's find out from all the past uh, um, coaches. I wonder whether we did any let's just, uh, interviews with them to find out what actually were the cause of their um, failures or inability to win Ghana um, uh, and Lawrence, laurels. Right. And then maybe if we tackle it genuinely, I'm sure um, we'll be able, yeah, to, make we'll be able to make some headway. Yeah. Because wow. those times when we're winning those laurels, I don't think the people were money conscious. Not at all. I, I mean, agree. They, everybody gave out himself, you know, and so we, we won those they laurels. They played but for now, pride. Until, um, until we had to fly money to, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know. It is what it is. <laughs> now, you should know where he is. That, that's the question. On, like I said, for, for personal reasons, I usually don't mm -hmm. talk about where... I live, but yeah. I've not had water. It's flowed once in over a week, which has made things pretty tough. It's been 
must you must be on hand to harvest water when it's there. I have barrels, else you need you need tank. Um, and here in Accra and in some parts of the central region, some things have been happening. What, what is happening? Yeah, I'm very very grateful for giving me this opportunity um, so that we could have discussions on, on water. <coughs> And uh, I wasn't going to miss this opportunity at all. And uh, you know, somewhere in November, or let me start with the fact that most of our equipments are very old. So we have been you know, managing them. We have very stringent standard operating procedures, our maintenance culture and everything. We don't joke with that at all. I mean, somebody could lose his job by failing to do what is expected of him. So that is one way that we're managing these old dilapidated equipments and stuff that, that, that we've used. So somewhere in November 2023, um, one of our pumps, a wager gave way. And so we had to work. It was very difficult putting that old pump back, to, back in operation, but we managed to do that. And so, and we needed to do that before the yule tide. So we did everything possible. And then we managed to put it back. I mean, and we did a yeoman's job. I mean, I was, I was there throughout with our engineers uh, working on these pumps, and I know uh, what we all went through. So um, we managed to put it back. And during the holidays, while people were enjoying, I mean, we're always and constantly monitoring uh, these pumps to ensure that um, um, they, they, they operated at least for people uh, to enjoy the, the, the yule tide. Around that same time, we had some challenges with bone as well, but we managed to we manage bone too. So, but then we're still not getting enough water from bone. So we realized that somewhere after Christmas, 27, 28, that about uh, the system became a bit jittery. But we were still um, working hard to ensure that water got to um, every, every, every home. And so in, um, immediately after the new year, we had to shut down. Uh, uh, this thing, the bone treatment plant, so that uh, we could work on, on that. What happened was that after the spillage from the Kosovo Dam, a lot of debris and uh, sludge and uh, aquatic weeds were washed from upstream to downstream. And our intake point is on is downstream the Kosovo Dam. And if you and the force to which our pumps abstract what abstract the water into the treatment plant, I um, abstracted a lot of um, these debris and sludge and water hyacinths and stuff into, into the sump. So then the whole line was choked, and as a result, we were not able to abstract enough for, for treatment. And these things cannot be removed, um, um, uh, set by doing it manually. So we needed to shut down uh, the pond treatment plant, and then we got our divers to go into the pipelines and to... Um, get all the debris um, uh, out, everything we needed to wash so that at least we can um, um, produce our full capacity. So we gave ourselves two days to do that, and within the two days we were able to do it. Now, we also are, uh, planned such that during the two days, some maintenance work that needed to be done on the plant will also be done. So we also changed um, what, uh, a section of the weaker uh, portions of the transmission line from bone mm. into into Tema, and then we also had to change some valves at our Dodoa booster station and, and all that. So the entire eastern part of Accra was without water for that two days. But proud to that because we were unable to treat at full capacity, uh, because of we're not, well, we're not getting uh, very high volumes. Um, um, the system was not too too good. So then when we managed when we shut down, the system dried up entirely. And then we finished after two days, only to face some minor challenges and entered into the third day. But then we stored uh, supply uh, at full capacity on Thursday. So within uh, some four or five days, the system on the eastern part has stabilized. And then immediately after we were done with that, then Wager went off again. Same pump that we had a challenge with in, in November. And then we have to work on, on, on it. You know, because they are old and the pumps are not even in, uh, uh, the manufacturers are not even in existence any longer. Anytime um, uh, there's a fault, 
then we need to improvise or do whatever we can to put it back in. We wouldn't even get to the part. But fortunately, we had to import some from somewhere. And uh, thankfully, yesterday, we had it. Immediately, we had them um, put everything back, fixed it, and then we started full operation. So thankfully, we are operating full capacity in Bon, we are operating full capacity in Wager. And the desalination plant is not giving us enough, but at least it is good to serve that Teshin Nungwa um, uh, enclave. We are augmenting that with some water from um, our thermal booster station. And so we are hopeful that by this weekend, the system should stabilize. The system should be fine from today or from tomorrow. But by the weekend, we should see that stability after a full rationing program. We are still uh, running our rationing um, program. You're still rationing water. In yes. which areas are you rationing? Uh, it's the entire Accra. Uh, the whole of Accra. The whole of Accra. Some people may have more um, number of days than others by virtue of their proximity to maybe um, our, our main lines and, and, and all that. So some will get like five days, some will get like six days, some will get like two days. Averagely, uh, the rationing program is four days um, within, within, within the system. That, that may explain why for over a week uh, water has come through my end only once. Um, and, um, but, but, but proud to all these challenges, were you getting regular flow or you were I getting mean, every, water on specific days? Every, every, maximum every three to four days, yes, we would uh, have so, every so, three days thereabouts. Now yeah. it's, so you can say you've added on another three to four days to, so, to that cycle. Yes. So now that the system, uh, we, we expect the system to stabilize by the weekend, I'm sure the flow will be better uh, from next week. But the other challenges are that we are also entering into the dry season. The dry season comes with its own challenges. So I want to appeal to the general public that they should bear with us. Let us conserve water. Let us use water responsibly and, uh, and wisely uh, so that at least we all can you know, survive till um, we enter into the, uh, the, the rainy season. Mm. But we are doing everything possible to ensure that the dry season impact is not felt. But we still have to prepare. So in the dry season, what usually happens? I know, but you, you tell yeah. the people what happens. So dry season, most of our river bodies will dry up, and then the humidity goes high because of the pollution. Mm. Because if the, the water is little and they still keep agitating the, um, uh, the alluvial soil, then it means that we are going to see high, high, higher turbidity than we are seeing now. And in some areas, it will dry up. Ent entirely. Mm. Uh, we'll do everything possible uh, to ensure. Now what we are doing is to dredge um, some of the intake areas so that we can store more water uh, while, um, um, uh, while we are in the dry season so that we can, get, uh, we can still have uh, water for, for treatment. So we are investing a lot into, into, into that area. In Accra, for instance, we are also putting back some one of our very old treatment plants that has been abandoned. So, uh, Akbong is a very old, uh, those times, during uh, Gordon, Gordon's uh, period. And so, we are changing pumps, we are rehabilitating the, the structure and, and all that, so that we can also get more water into, into, into the system. So, right. and we are uh, just uh, hopeful that things will go well as planned and as we, are, as, as we work towards um, our, ta our targets. You say, so now, just for the benefit of those watching us, Bone and Wager are operating at, or will be operating at no, full capacity. They are putting a, operating at full capacity currently. They are operating but, at uh, full because capacity Because of the challenges currently. that we faced in the last few days, mm. uh, it will take a bit of time for the system to stabilize. Okay. Which is, because which, we are which running a rationing program, mm. it will take a while for the rationing cycle to end. So by right. the time the rationing cycle ends, everybody... When, when do you forecast the rationing cycle should maximum... No, by, the by rationing cycle is within a year. Uh, sorry, within a week. Right. So uh, uh, in every week, everybody gets at least a number of days of water. Yeah, and but I'm saying, I think you said something about it's ending, right? No, it, it can't end now until we expand our treatment plants or we build a new one. Now, if you look at the volumes of water that we produce in Accra daily, vis-a-vis mm. -vis, uh, the demand mm. um, or, the, or, or the population size, okay, the gap is around 50 million gallons of water on a daily basis. The 50 million gallons of water that we need a new treatment That is plant. if you were giving everybody water. 
Um, to meet the, the demands not, of Accra? Not everybody. To meet the demand of Accra. Not everybody because a lot of people are staying beyond the service jurisdiction. Okay. Uh -huh. And they do not have pipelines. If you do not have pipelines uh, extended to where you live, um, then it becomes a bit difficult. Because if you look at the peripheral, the peripheries of Accra, most areas do not have pipelines there. And so, and some areas fall within rural, rural areas, of which community water will have to uh, and take charge of that. So then if you fall within or beyond um, the service jurisdiction, then uh, we can't do much until pipelines are extended to um, your area. So we can't count you as part of um, those that we have now. Uh, and so the bills, uh, people yes, say that your bills, bills yes. are, there's this comment. Shant King says, no water at NTHC states around school junctions since December 2023. What at all is the problem? Will you bring bills even without uh, providing us with water? Yes, um, we will bring the bills. Mm. We will bring the bills because, um, one, we have a contract with our customers to serve them and to issue them bills at the end of every month. And so the bills will come whether there's water or not. So, but, so what, what, what but, will such bills reflect when no water has passed? So when there? no water, then your, that, the consumption for that particular month will be zero. And it will be indicated that it's zero. Okay. But you may have arrears. Okay. So then the arrears will add up to your zero. So for someone who is up to date in payments, what then will it, show then on it to reflect zero. There are others who even have credit. So it will show that you have credit of a, of the, of a, certain, a certain amount. So the bills okay. will come. But the mistake that people, uh, people do is that uh, our system is a post-pay system. So you consume the water before you, we bill you to pay. Mm. And so when they consume the water, let's say in a month, they consume water for two weeks mm. and, or for three weeks, and there's no water for a week. Mm. And they come to say that, ah, water is not flowing. Why, why, why do you want me to, why are you sending me bills? And, but you, you may have forgotten that it is a 30-day cycle. So within that 30 days, uh, you may have consumed water. And then we bill our customers uh, the, uh, this thing, uh, 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 through our meters. And our meters read your consumption. So you are built according to your consumption on our meter. Mm. So if no water has gone through the uh, meter, then it won't read. So it will be zero. But if the meter has read a certain figure, then you may have consumed some water. So even if I'm not there, the only thing is I just have to come and look at the meter because we only operate with the meters. Mm. You understand? So we only come and look at the meter and what the meter says is what uh, we will work with. You understand? So people should appreciate the fact that we only use the meter. And then there are other, other customers who are also built on estimates. So you may not have a meter and you'll be, building, you'll be built on a, a, a certain amount, a certain amount every month. Mm. Now that is also another contract, such that if the water is flowing and you consume more than that amount, we can't we can't fault you or say that you have consumed more. So we are going to bill you more. We'll bill you the same figure. And if in a particular month or in the event where you consume less or water do not flow at all, you still will have to pay because that is the agreement between us. If you do not appreciate that agreement. The only thing is to apply to Ghana Water. We we'll assess your situation, whether you need a meter or not. Because most people who are built on estimates are built on estimates based on a certain history. Okay. Uh -huh. History so of consumption. Then, yes. All right. Uh, so just, just on this point, lest I forget, can we expect any water shortages for any reasons in the coming weeks, for example? Is there anything Ghanaians should know? I mean, when it comes to electricity, for example, sometimes people, you know, go up in arms or get up in arms because they think, ah, but there's, there's a lot of off and on, off and on. If there's a cycle, just let me know so that maybe I operate um, a cold store, I know that today something, then I know what to, don't play these tricks with me. Yeah. Is, do you have any roadmap? Do you for, foresee that uh -huh. in certain communities there uh, will not be water for a while? Our products are two different products. No, I, I just, yes. I was just looking uh -huh. at that comparison. And in terms of for, for us, our source is the raw um, uh, water mm -hmm. that we abstract for treatment. Uh, the other aspect is the capacity of our treatment plants. Okay, so every day, the capacity of the treatment plant can produce a certain volume of water. Mm. 
Mm. Beyond that, then we need to ex expand. But since you haven't had any expansion, you will be able, every treatment plant will be able to treat a certain volume of water. But we are working with equipment, okay? Just like even human beings, you can fall sick at any time. These equipments can also give way at any time. And we have admitted and informed the public that most of our equipments are quite old. So there's the possibility of they giving way at any time. But we have put in very strict maintenance culture, very strict standard operating procedures, such that we envisage that if you are following the way we should, we should extend the lifespan of these equipment or we should manage them. We should be able to manage them to operate at least to serve us the way the way we want so i can't sit here and give a definite uh, um, answer that with what we have done we are not going to face any challenge again for a year or for two years you understand because anything at all can happen when we conclude when we finished the, uh, the so, so, so you're addressing the other aspect of my question I, I was actually asking do you foresee that there could be still some shortages in, in the coming weeks and months I, i'm not even asking about whether there will be no shortages i'm mm -hmm. asking whether do you foresee that the, there could be that is bound to happen it's bound to happen yes and that mm -hmm. is that is why i picked my uh, my this from, from my the reverse from, position yes okay that it is bound to happen mm. based on um, um, our situation, our mm. old equipment and blah, 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 you know, and all that. But I'm trying to give some, uh, our, our consumers some assurance that we are doing everything possible to have the pumps running mm. so that we can have a continuous flow. But I do want to assure them that it will never happen because it is not possible. Okay, so Mr. Martin says measure your, your whatever because shortages are bound to happen. But they are working assiduously, getting new equipment, and ensuring even working on the older ones to ensure that um, service, yes. service continues. One thing that and of we course, can help ourselves the dry season with, yes. and everything. One thing that we can help, help ourselves with is to have enough storage. So if you have a storage capacity that can take you, let's say, a week or two, right. then you wouldn't feel the impact. I mean, I, I have to use, like I said, uh, I have to use some storage systems, including gallons as well, to ensure that when the water passes through, you harvest at least what can last you about, like you said, about yes, a, a week. week or two. So that even if the water is not flowing for a week, your normal basic processes, a little washing here, I, a little using of the I lavatory. I have to save for about six to seven months to enable me to get a polytank. Wow. Okay, and that storage can take me and my family... Um, we are just for our home. Okay. So my family, about two weeks. Mm. So then if within the two weeks I'm getting water, then it will be topping up. So then I don't feel the impact when, there's a, uh, when the rationing program is on. So let's all do that. I mean, we may not all have the resources to get it at, at once. But like right. I, I did, I didn't have the resources, but I made a conscious effort at getting that story. So for seven months, I was saving a certain amount of money to enable me to get... Um, um, that, that, that reservoir. On, on, the, on the back of that improvisation that you spoke of, um, yes, you've got some new equipment, but how much more improvisation are you having to do? I mean, is this a lot going on? Is there a lot going on in terms of improvising? Uh, because then there's also the picture of the fact that there's a lot of equipment we really need to change, change move yes. over from. Mm -hmm. And we are also mm -hmm. making a conscious effort at changing all the, those uh, um, old points. <clears throat> Now, we can't always be relying on government. So, um, for instance, last year, uh, we, we had a target to change some of these equipment, but where is the money going to come from? So you re realize that the whole of last year, we're out there collecting uh, money from um, our customers. Instead of day paying, we still have to spend uh, some resources to go out chasing them for them to pay so that we will, ha will have money to extend pipelines, to change these pumps and all that. Because some of the pipelines are also very old. And they've been encrusted, so some of them do not even have this, the the uh, the uh, inner I diameter see. the way yeah. it is because it's been encrusted for the water, for the water to flow. And we need to change them and, and all that. So we did uh, we worked really hard last year, and I want to encourage everybody. I mean, Ghana Water is a state um, um, uh, agency, and so it belongs to all of us. Uh, we are the sole water producers, and so we all will have to support. Um, 
um, the organization to enable it to function, function <coughs> for um, ourselves. Okay, so the least you can do is to just uh, pay our bills promptly, no matter how small it is. If you look at the sub-region, you realize that um, our tariffs are not too good, but and they are, and, and so they are, and, and very cheap for water is very cheap for uh, or, uh, about the cheapest within the sub-region, so that people should cultivate. Uh, um, the culture of paying their bills regularly and promptly so that we can also save that little and then even save from um, um, save some money also from going to them to collect the, the money. We have invested a lot into technology so that to make it be easier for um, our, our customers to, to pay their bills and it's still being difficult. For instance, we have the customer app which everybody can download on uh, Google Play Store or App Store interact with the Ghana Water Company Limited, check on your bills, pay through the app. You can pay through Momo in the comfort of your home at any time T and from any part of this, uh, or, 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 or uh, any part of the globe. So um, uh, we should be able to, I mean, do, uh, do, do, do that and save um, Ghana Water Company Limited. If it, seriously, if it hadn't been for very good and prudent management of the company, I don't know where it would have been. Um, um, so by, so by, by l l let's talk about revenue losses. How, what is the state of the losses in terms of revenue? Uh, because our system is a, a post-based system, um, uh, it would be a bit difficult for me to mention figures now because almost every day, every month, there's add-on and arrears and people need to pay. But what we are doing um, is to make it easier for people to pay. So we expect people to pay. People are owed us. Our customers are owed us. Um, um, as at, um, uh, as at uh, somewhere November, um, our customers were owing us close to 900 uh, million cities. You know, mm. that's a huge amount of money. That's um, almost so, a billion cities. Yes, yes, yes. And mm. um, um, they need to pay. It's not like um, people can have. There are people who are owing 50 cities, 100 cities, and, and, and all that. You know, because water is cheap. I mean, people's monthly um, bills um, are somewhere, sometimes, especially for domestic consumers, are most of the time less than 200 cities. So um, people just assume that, oh, really, it's, 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 it's small. Let me hold on to the next month or two months after. In holding on one, that cumulative amount becomes big, and then maybe you may not be able to pay outright. But then the thing is, the impact is on the GWCL, because we need... Uh, that money on a monthly basis to buy chemicals and to do everything that we, we need to do. Look at the dilapidated vehicles that we are using. They are putting our lives at risk uh, to save Mother Ghana. And people can only reciprocate by paying their bills uh, promptly. So okay. at least uh, we can also... I, I know you have to go. Before I cross over to my colleague, uh, Sweetie Abochi, who's somewhere in Fadama, um, you know, on the same water as you. Uh, just a quick one. We are also hearing that a lot of your meters are getting missing, especially in the Bono region. Quickly on that. What was the yes, state of that? It is not only the Bono region, it's throughout the country. You know, uh, it's made of brass. Uh, our old uh, mechanical meters uh, are made so of brass. So I see why they... So people still, and uh, they still, they just put in, just throw away the mechanism, and then... Um, go use their brass for whatever they want to use for. Okay. Uh, use, use them for. But what we are doing now is to change them into plastic um, meters. So all our suppliers now are serving us with uh, plastic um, meters. But we are, most importantly, we are moving into uh, digital uh, smart meters, um, which, uh, which uh, cannot be used for anything. With the components in that smart meter, you can't use it for anything, mm -hmm. except it's expensive. But we are still investing into that to ensure okay. that, uh, that, that, that they stop. Right. But um, we also need to be mindful and watchful of um, the, the, the meter so that we'll stop the stealing um, of the meter. They are quite expensive so and it's affecting All us. Right. All right. Yeah. And at least apart from this stealing the meter, where they just remove the meter and then the water will just yeah. go waste for yeah. hours before. But if you do it at midnight, you, have, you only see it in the morning, which means that the water may have just gone waste for right. about three to five hours, which is um, also not the So all of us must also be responsible. Yeah. Stanley Mati, thank you so much for joining I'm the also conversation. Very grateful. Of course, he is Director of Communications. Is that the proper title? Yes. yes Director yes, of yes. Communications at the Ghana Water Company Limited. Well...